This is your sign to redo your portfolio. Yes, it can be tedious, but your portfolio serves as a first impression to recruiters and hiring managers. I'm taking my own advice and I'm updating mine. In this video, I'll be taking you through that journey of updating my portfolio. Hi guys, happy new year and welcome back to my channel. I'm back on the job market, yes again, but that is the life of a contractor. And it's time for me to update my portfolio. It's been years since I've done it, so the design is looking a bit outdated. The tech market is a bit tough at the moment. There are a lot of layoffs and not as many open roles, so the competition is higher, which means standing out and being memorable is important. I think one thing that makes portfolio building daunting is not knowing where to start. When it comes to creating your portfolio, you don't have to create a website from scratch. I recommend using website builders. My portfolio has been on Squarespace since 2016, and every few years I just choose a new template and update it. There are other good website builders such as Wix, Webflow, Elementor, and Framer, which offer free versions. For case studies, I use a template which I shared in this video. I will link the video and the template below. Having a good template helps to speed up the process of writing a concise case study. So the current template, I've probably been using it for three years now. And so far it has worked very well for me. I loved minimal designs when I first chose this template. And this shade of pink was very popular at the time, but my brand has since changed and I need that to be reflected in my work. So here's what I'm going to improve. There are too many projects dating all the way back to one of my first project. It also doesn't show at a high level what I'm good at. There was a time when I had recruiters asking me if I had mobile app experience and it's the first project on my website. That told me that I need to surface it in a more obvious way. I also want to highlight my speaking gigs and the content creation work I do. Let's get started. So I decided to start from scratch. I won't be editing my current website. Here I am looking through Squarespace's templates and look, there's my old template. Um, this is the template I have chosen. Yes, it's very bright. But there's a method to the madness. I like the structure of it. I like all the elements that it has. And Squarespace is very flexible, so it allows you to change the colors. This is my first attempt at changing the colors. I'm not loving these palettes. At this point, I was just playing around trying to see what these colors looked like. And at this point, I felt like the palettes were very restrictive. I was struggling to get them to do what I wanted. I nearly gave up, but I did find how to customize the palettes later on, which I will show you. As soon as I got it a light color, I decided to stop playing around with the colors too much and focus on building the website itself. So we're just going to go with these colors for the time being. But I knew that I hated this gradient, so that's going to go. I just don't know how to do that yet. Next, I focused on the animation. Maybe this is something I probably should have done at the end, but I guess as I was exploring the tools, this is what I found. At this point, I didn't quite like the fade-in. I felt like it was a bit abrupt. I explored them all, but I felt like scale was the nicest one. It was very soft when it was loading. So that's the one I went with. Now for the actual design. So I'm adding in my title text with a paragraph of text about me and how I work. Now I'm playing around with this image, seeing where it should be. This is when I discovered how flexible Squarespace truly is. Look at those little boxes that come up as you are moving whatever element. It really shows that you can place objects anywhere. And here I am just trying to find a shape for this image. At this point, I'm just moving elements around the page. I had no idea what I wanted my website to look like. It's just all about trial and error and experimenting. As you can see, I'm changing the shape of the image again and I will change it quite a few times. On to the project. So I'm just rounding the corners of this image. I had an idea that I wanted all my projects to be listed under each other. And I'm going to add a small bit of text kind of explaining what each project is. But rather than just explaining, I'll be highlighting a main achievement of the project. This bit of text came with the template and I loved it. I decided to keep it. Listen, you need to hype yourself up. There is no room for being humble. So I am listing all the things I do well. At this point, I decided that I want to try out having 
the projects next to each other rather than stacked on top of each other. It's all about experimenting. I feel like that black button is too harsh, especially as it's going to be repeated on the page over and over again, so I'm going for an underlined text button. This is how my website is looking so far. Very messy because some sections have been repeated, but I will delete them once I've decided on which one I'm going for. I've decided on a layout for my projects now, so I'm going back and deleting some of the sections I no longer need. I'm going to replace that random image with a picture of myself and I'm going to play around with the shapes. I want it to look fun. And here I've decided on a hero section, so now I have to delete the other one. And in the right hand corner, you can preview what your website will look like on mobile, which is great. Here I am fixing the spacing. Any changes that you make on mobile will not affect your layout on desktop. I've replaced that stock thumbnail image with some placeholder ones for the time being and you can see that the layout is now coming together. I like this animation at the bottom and this is what I changed the text to, to let me help your business thrive, but I don't know, it's not working for me at the moment. And I just got the idea to just list all my skills, so they have put product strategy, and I'm just going to list a lot of other skills that I feel like I want to highlight. I quite like this because it kind of acts like a resume. These are the skills that have been listed out on my CV. And it's a nice way to end the page. Next, I need to decide on final colors. The colors I've been working with don't make sense. I've decided to go for like a purple to match the theme of my YouTube branding. I was just playing around and experimenting and I finally figured out how to edit these colors customly. You can use hex codes, which helps you to find the specific color that you want to use. So I go on Figma to figure out the color pen that I want, and then I use the hex code and import it here. And if applying the master color palette seems a bit too complicated, you can go into individual elements and select the color that you want, which is what I'm doing right here. And now I've updated the thumbnails with a purple background which matches the rest of the layout. So here is the final design. I decided to add a footer at the bottom because I needed to give the user a CTA. It's a good place for me to tell them to contact me and add an email. 
That is my new portfolio. That's the homepage done. I'll be doing a part to uh, update the case studies and my about page. So make sure you're subscribed to see that. I hope that inspires you to update your portfolio as well. And if you do update your portfolio, drop a link in the comments. I would like to see what you're building. A key takeaway is to approach building a portfolio as a UX experiment. I had no idea what my portfolio was going to look like when I first selected that very bright and colorful template, but I just went with the flow. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, you can help me out by pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.